Beyond the green curtain, a single mother follows the yellow brick road to an impossible choice. Written by short story press Brandon Humphreys. Narrated by Warren Keyes. Behind the Curtain, Beyond the Dream 1. Mary was vaguely aware that the doorbell had rung again. She only had two packs of Marlb Special Blend 100s to put in the display before she could check that task off her list. Her knees ached as she crouched to put the last of the cigarettes in their place. Just in that moment, before her brain decided to turn and greet whomever had walked in, she heard an agitated cough from the person on the other side of the counter. When she finally did turn around, there was a middle-aged man, pudgy, with a hunter orange cap on and a stubble farm on his face that only served to accentuate his double chin and belly. Mary opened her mouth with the intent to say, Sorry, sir, how can I help you? But she barely got the S sound out before the man slapped two bills on the counter with force and said, Forty on number six. He then turned around and stormed out the door. Before the door had closed behind him, she heard him mutter, Jesus Christ. She rolled her eyes and started to ring the man up for 40 on number six, and then, like she did with nearly every transaction, she thought of Zack. Zack, riding his bike for the first time. Zack, blowing out the candles on his birthday cake. Zack, who always wanted to catch the spiders and set them free instead of killing them. Zack, who would die if she didn't greet the sons of bitches like that last one with a smile every time. And then, as if on cue, she felt her phone vibrate. She looked over her shoulder to see if Larry was looking, and then she snuck a look at her phone. It was the school. The doorbell rang again, and a group of three teenage boys came through. They spread out across the lobby of Jack's stop-and-go convenience and service station like velociraptors in Jurassic Park. One, a tall boy in a tank top and an Atlanta Braves hat turned backward, hit the restroom. Another boy, dressed similarly but with no hat, went to the slushy machine and started filling a cup with the extra extreme x fiend variety of green energy slushy. The last one, shorter and pudgier than his friends, went to the beef jerky and chip aisle and started foraging. Mary looked down at her phone again. Zack had a seizure again. He's okay, but we need you to come and get him for the rest of the day. Shit, Mary thought. She looked over at Larry, who was now watching her. She sighed and shrugged her shoulders. He had a seizure again, Larry, Mary said. Larry sighed. Do you have to go to the hospital? No, I just need to go get him. Then I'll come right back here, and he can stay with me the rest of my shift. Just give me half an hour. The look on Larry's face was a mixture of pity, disgust, anger, annoyance, and the very real implication that this couldn't keep happening. Fine, he said. Just make sure you're back as soon as you can be. Thanks, Larry, she said, hanging her head as she grabbed her keys and walked out the door. She got in her 1989 Ford Taurus sedan, drove the three miles to Parkway High School, and went straight to the nurse's office. She knew the way well. When she walked into the room, Mrs. Avery, the school nurse, was waiting at her desk, and Zack was sitting on the patient bench. The sterile white paper rolled across the cushioned bench, crinkled and crackled as Zack turned to see his mother. Are you okay, honey? she said to Zack. Yeah, I hit my head when I went down, though. Mrs. Avery said I don't have a concussion, but it's going to be quite a lump, Zack said. It's definitely going to leave a mark, Mrs. Avery interjected. He went down in Mr. Henderson's science class and hit his forehead on one of the lab benches. I did check him for a concussion, but I don't think there is any. Still, you can take him to the doctor if you want, and you probably should, but... But, there it was. But I know you can't afford it, that was the implication. But you checked it out thoroughly? Mary asked. 
Yes, Mrs. Avery replied. I'm confident he'll be okay with a little rest. I'd put some ice on that goose egg that's forming, though. Thank you, Mary said to Mrs. Avery, then to Zack. Come on, kiddo. Let's get you home and get some ice on that.